I'll take that as a no then. Hey, kia ora, Helen Browns here, community live from Mesa in Arizona. Hope you're all having a super fantastic sparkling tune-up Tuesday. We've been having a blast here, although somebody's been complaining a lot because it seems like I'm taking too long to pay her attention, even though she's had lots of scratches. We have played endlessly. We've had some hugs. We haven't sung together. And every time I ask her if she wants to sing, she just turns around and walks away, as you probably just saw as we went live. Um, so how was your tune-up Tuesday? What small or major tune-ups did you do today? So I'm just trying to get this all organized here. Um, what major or, or slight tune-ups did you do today that um, for your business, for your life, for your dreams, your goals, what stuff did you get done today? Um, my tune-up today was I tried I'm working on a new family tree which I started yesterday and um, there's um, the first part I have to do is that um, the client has already done some research so what we're doing is that we're going through and verifying all the information that they have in the tree first before we can actually start working on the tree when somebody gives me a tree that is um, has been started the first thing I have to do is go through and verify information because there's a lot of misinformation out there or it could be, it may not just be misinformation, it could be that there are several people with the same name, you know, like a common name like John Smith and they may have the wrong John Smith in their tree. Even though, you know, five out of seven items add up to their John Smith. Um, it's just those other two that you've got to be careful of. So um, I'm trying a new method of, after doing my certification course, it, it um, there was a couple of things in that class that inspired me to try a different way of researching. And so what I'm actually doing is instead of, um, I'm looking at their tree on Ancestry, they've given me access to it so I can edit it and all of that, but what I'm actually doing is I, um, I'm using Trello um, to help do my family tree and each list is a generation. So I have all the cards set up under each list and if you haven't used Trello, it's like an, an electronic Board. You've all seen my project board on my mirror where I have the project at the top and then underneath I have the sticky notes that is each each step within that project that needs to be completed um, so that oh, it's, it's a process that needs to be completed. Each step is a, um, is a little post-it note. So that's basically taking that information, putting it on Trello. But the reason I'm doing it on Trello and not on my mirror is one, my mirror is not big enough. Um, and two, it means that I can very easily um, download images from what I'm researching, upload them into Trello against that person. So when I come to, um, so as I'm verifying the information, I'm putting in there every image, every citation that I can find, um, links to the exact page, and that way it's all there. So when I start moving that across to Ancestry, um, it's gonna be very easy and very quick to do. And the reason I'm not doing an ancestry is they already have a tree started. And so what I want to do is get the information verified first in Trello. And so whatever information I find, I can then go to their tree and go, okay. And But I've already taken the information from their tree and put it in Trello, and that's what I'm verifying. Um, and yes, I have already had to make some changes to some of the stuff there, but I haven't touched the tree or done any, any editing on the tree yet. Um, I'm working on one branch of the tree right now and tomorrow and we've probably taken that one about as far as we can so tomorrow I'll start on another portion of that tree but it's very interesting going through this and I'm finding that it's moving a lot the research is moving a lot quicker and I'm not getting distracted by those little green leaves that come up <laughs> um, but I did also learn something new today too I was um, there's a few genealogists that I follow on YouTube that put up some great videos with information in and everything else and one of them put up information about the beta testing that's currently going on on some new features and um, unfortunately my profile is not one of the ones that um, yeah my, my pro and my profile is not one of the ones that has been chosen to be part of the beta testing um, because there's a place that you can go and you can click on it and it will tell you if there's a beta testing available and you can click and say yes I want to participate um, so um, my profile was not chosen for that they're only selecting a select few of you so that you can go in there and try these new things and I was looking at these new tools that are coming out and I was like oh, I want them <laughs> because what is really cool and um, 
what is really cool is that when you get those little green leaves, if you accept a hint, it's asking you, why did you accept this hint? Is it an exact match to this person? Is it something that you want to accept now so you can research later? Um, it's got different questions asking you why you accepted that particular hint. And then you can put your other, you can put other, you can put your own reasons in there as well if it doesn't match any of the check boxes. And you can select anywhere from one to six boxes. Um, and then you've also got a comments area as well if you want to choose other. And all of that gets fed back to them. And this is helping them create their database and thing and helping them um, refine the searches more for you. Um, so that was kind of cool to learn about the, these new tools that are going to be coming out. I'm like, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. And so I'm like, I'm like sitting there. There was like 15 minute video and the whole time I'm like, oh, oh, I want, I want, I want, I want. Can we have it now, please? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I now have to wait patiently for them to bring that out so that we can do it. And, um, but I have noticed that there's a couple of things um, when I was looking at census reports today. It now has a new, it's in beta testing, that you can um, click on the little balloon at the top that comes up and it will take you on an in-depth tour into the life of the person that you have up on the census report. So you can go and learn more about their life. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but um, I'm going to give it a go. It's on my list over here to do because right now I'm working on a tree. And so maybe during a break one time I'll go in and have a look at that and see how that actually works. But um, there's some cool stuff that's going to be coming out with them. Um, and the other thing I did too today during my break is I was on FamilySearch.org, which is the one that's done by the um, Mormons. Um, it's a free website that you can use, go put your tree in there. But they also have volunteering positions available too, where you can go in and, um, and so part of all of my certifications and everything and my training on my training and stuff, um, when I have to report to the Associated Professional Genealogists every year, this is what I've done in training and volunteer work on um, that sort of stuff. Um, you put in there how many hours you did to volunteer, how many hours did you spend training, what training classes did you take, what certifications did you take, and all of that. And you're going to do a minimum of 12 a year. So um, one of the things I'm going to do, is, one of the things I have started doing is that with FamilySearch.org is you have the ability to become a volunteer for them online and it's going through and you can pick the project, but it could be something like a census report where you're going through and um, you're transcribing the handwriting. Um, these are these are massive, massive tasks to do. There is a because everything has always been handwritten onto forms and all of that over time. So it's going in, it's transcribing um, some of the stuff. The their computers, they can, um, they've got software programs that recognize some words that are handwritten. But you go and verify, is that correct? Do they have it correct? Um, yeah, do they have the transcription correct? And for the words they can't transcribe, are you able to see what it is and type it into their little forms that they pop up there? So on one side you have the handwritten document, on the other side you have, this is what we've transcribed so far, this, these are where we've got the blanks, what does this blank say? Um, so that's going to be some fun, so I'm going to probably do about an, um, and of course it's all part of training because you learn new things as you go along and it helps you tune in your um, handwriting analysis skills, not hand, handwriting translation skills. And you can put in there if you want to do English, Spanish, Russian, German, whatever, whatever language you want to do because they have documents that are um, in different languages and they're looking for people to pull out the key words. Um, like for example with the Spanish documents I'm having to, or the documents from Mexico I'm having to look at, I'm looking for keywords in there and I actually have a PDF file that gives me the most common used words on Spanish, on any Spanish documents, which is really cool. And they've got some other words on there too, but things like months, days, um, years, looking for, um, looking if they've got the father, you know, what they're using for father, what they use for mother, um, what they use for parents, grandparents, all of that sort of stuff. And so I can just, um, if I see a word, I'm like, oh, hang on, that looks familiar. I can go over to this other document go down because it's all listed in Spanish and um, go down and go, oh, okay, perfect, excellent. Like I was looking for the word age and I was like, well, what's this word here? And so I go and look at it and it's like age. I'm like, yes, that's the one I needed. And then I was looking at it, picked it up and I went, found that word on the on the document and I went, oh, I actually know that number. <laughs> that, that word's months and that word's nine. So that kid was nine years old when they passed away. 
awesome, I actually translated something. <laughs> Don't ask me to pronounce it because I am going to screw it up like crazy. I know I am. But the fact that I could, I'm could, i starting to recognize words and pick the words out on these, on these uh, Mexican documents is just awesome. Um, so I'm learning to read Spanish right now through usage. Um, but I'm learning where the key words are that I need, like where did it take place? Um, so I've learned that. Um, where you find the mother and the father's names on the documents. Because they actually write that um, in the 1800s, they were actually writing paragraphs. It wasn't a form where you fill in the blanks. It was paragraphs that were writing directly into the parish records or into the civil records. Um, later on, they actually had printed forms where they would fill in the blanks. But um, in the 1800s in Mexico, um, they had this book and they would actually write a paragraph in there. Don't ask me what the paragraph says. All I know is I know where the place, I know how to find the place. I can find the date. I can find um, the mother's name and the father's name and the child's name. And if it's a baptism, I can find that date. I can find the birth date on the birth register. I can find the death date on the death register um, and the marriage date on the marriage one. And they actually write a full paragraph. And some of these paragraphs almost take up the whole page of the book. Um, and some go on to the second page. But um, so it's, it's kind of, it's very interesting. And so I'm like, oh, I'm kind of proud of myself. I'm learning new things. And so that's what I love about genealogy. You're always learning something new as you're researching. So this new way uh, method of researching where I have the Trello board set up, um, I've got a list at the top which tells me that this is the first generation, this is the second generation, third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation, and then I've got the um, a card for each person. So think of it like an index card, and it's on a cork board stuck underneath a heading. So each list has a heading, and then under each under Beneath each list there is an index card and in, the, in that index card I can attach images, I can attach files, I can attach links, I can have, I have a comments area where I can comment. I also have two, um, one for a male, one for a female, um, um, templates already set up. So when I need to introduce a new person, um, add a new person, I can just copy that, um, create a card off that template, put the person's name on there, and it's already got the form set up for birth, death, marriage, um, um, burial area, you know, when and where, so date and locations, already set up there in the form, so they all look exactly the same. And then I have a to-do list with, I've got to find the birth record, I've got to find the baptism record if there is one, find the marriage er um, records, find... Um, census reports if they're in a census report or electoral rolls, look at directories, look at newspaper articles. So I have a whole list of things for me to go and research. Now some of them won't be, won't be relevant, which is okay because they'll just get deleted off the list. But it's really cool because the little index card, when you just see the, the title of the card without all the stuff in there, um, on the to-do list it goes, you've got 20 items on your to-do list and you've done three of them. So it'll have a three slash 20. So it's kind of good. You can see the progression um, on each card very quickly. Um, and uh, sorry, my dog is playing with her comp. Um, and it's just sort of like, wow, this is so much easier. And I can see it all there. And I can quickly scroll to a person's name and bring it up. And there's all their information right there. Um, yes, it will be good when I get it onto Ancestry. Yes, I've got to transfer it all across to Ancestry. But for now, for the research side of it, it's got all my notes in there. So I can put notes in there going, um, found them on the 1930 census, can't find them on the 1940 census, where are they? Or um, found their name on one of their children's obituaries but can't find their obituary. Or, um, you know, so I'm finding different things. Oh, this person, this sibling got married to this name on this death, on this obituary, but when I went to obituary later on, the, the woman's name had changed, so obviously she got remarried during that time. What happened to the what happened to the husband that she was married to? Did he die? Um, did um, they get divorced? So now we've got to go. So now that's another thing that's gone on the to-do list is why has there been a name change between I think it was like 1967 and 1977? In that 10-year gap, what happened for her to have a name change? Um, so as I'm coming across these things, going, hang on, this is the right person because all the siblings listed are the right people. And the birth, everything's matching up, but this one person here has a different name. So, um, so I pull out the to-do list, 
type it in there and now I have to research why that person has a different name. So um, it's kind of cool and I attach the obituary to it so I can go back to it very quickly to see what was the name change and all of that sort of thing. Um, so everything is very quickly referenced. So I'm going to that one person. I don't have to go across to the other person to see their obituary. It's all there on one card. So it's kind of cool. Um, and you all know on pen and paper, I still have my notebook next to me. I'm still handwriting out notes and asking myself questions and then transcribing it onto here. But getting the, um, the images uploaded to that person's um, card is very quick, very easy. And I have put a lot in there today. It is amazing when I've gone back and had a look to see how much has been done today. It's just sort of like mind-blowing. But anyway, so it's just those little tune-up things. This was a major tune-up for me, trying a new method for research in genealogy. It was not one that was listed in the course that I did, but I got inspired by some of the stuff I read in the course. Hey, let's go try Trello and see if we can make it work. So far, it's working beautifully. Absolutely love it. And I actually created a template for genealogy so I can just, every time I create a new family, I can go to a copy of that board and boom, it's all set up, um, ready to go. And all the to-do lists are in place and everything. So it's kind of like, yes, less work for the setup. You know, it took me a little time to get the setup done, but it's gonna be well worth it down the road. So anyway, that was my tune-up for today. What tune-ups did you do today? What's something new did you learn today? What's something new that you tried today? What's a decision that you made? Let us know in the comments below so we can help celebrate with you and keep you on track as well. So you come to say bye. Okay. Do you want to sing a song? <laughs> My little girl, she has been so playful today. She has been very playful. Lots of play, little sleep, lots of play. I don't know what she is on today, but she's feeling good no matter what. Anyway, have a super fantastic sparkling evening, and we will catch you guys tomorrow for Winning Wednesday. Hey, Conera!